What's up? Day two of my company retreat here in the mountains in Lake Tahoe. I'm in the village at the Palisades. I believe this was one of the, the uh, Winter Olympics sites in the past. I don't know when, I don't know the history, but uh, there was the Olympic Games here. So I'm over here standing over here next to the fire because it's warm and I wanted to get a little bit more warmed up before I continue my walk. Take some, uh, some photos of some things and also get some more footage so that I can record this video that I'm recording right now. It's really cold here today. It's, uh, it feels like it's like 30 or so. Half of the company, well not half, maybe a quarter of the company is currently uh, doing a mix of either snowboard lessons or ski lessons or just snowboarding or skiing. And then we got second half a day. Some folks will probably do the same thing. So I'm hoping that uh, this evening, you know, we'll probably end up doing a dinner or something uh, before I end up having to leave, which it, I think right now it's going to be around 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Well, yeah, let's about to go into this north face and see what they got. So what's cool about this village place is that they have a lot of uh, different stores. So they have the Patagonia store as well as uh, here at the north face store. Last time I was here, I bought a jacket. The jacket was not in the Oh, hello. All right. You got these little baby jackets. I will get some for my niece, but she'll grow. She's been growing. So, in my opinion, it doesn't make much sense to get something like this because she'll grow out of it in a few months. But maybe gloves will be better. Oh, they got little, little baby shoes, too. All right, let me go to the section for me, the person with the money. I've been wanting to get one of the lightweight uh, jackets like this. I've been wanting to get one of these without a hood. So I already have some, but they all have hoods. But uh, because I just bought a new, a new jacket that has a hood, I want to be able to layer up and not have my hood like you know, mess up the other hood. So something like this without the hood would be ideal, relatively thin. I'm not sure if any of you have ever been in anywhere really cold, but it's my opinion that you have to buy clothes in the area where it's cold because if you buy them in a, in a summer city like where I'm from, they don't work. At least that's been my impression. That's, I don't know if that's really the case, but that's what I think. Look at these, these mitts. I couldn't do mitts. All right, so they don't have the lightweight jacket without the hood that I would like, which is a bit unfortunate. Oh, wait, wait, oh, wait, wait. No, never mind. They do. They do have it. Look at this. They do have one without the hood, except this dookie brown. I can't be rocking a dookie brown. Or is it dookie green? It's dookie brown and green. I don't know. But I can't rock this. But I suppose that's okay. I can go to uh, the Patagonia store and see what they got. All right. I'm going to go walk over here and see what there is to see. Last time I was here, there was a, there was like this mini stream. It's nothing really major, but I'm gonna go look at it. I don't really have much else to do. So I'm going over there. Last time I was here, that's where I stayed, which is right adjacent to the tram. That was the only good thing about it is that it was adjacent to the tram, which goes to the top of the mountain, way the hell up there. Look at this, walking on snow. Fortunately, I brought my all-terrain shoes, my trail runners. Even though this is icy, I still have plenty of grip, although I'm not about to play around. <laughs> I'm not about to push it. But it's nice that I have grip on this icy street without having to worry too much about falling. That would be the worst. I'm just curious, if there's any one of you who you feel like it's worse to fall in something either wet or cold. So imagine if you fell into this, which is both wet and cold. That's got to be the worst. Because already bad when you fall in something that's wet or cold and then you add them together. I don't know. I don't think I'd be able to tolerate it very well. Ah, check this out. I probably should have put my camera. Yeah, it's probably worth pulling my camera out. Let me go somewhere. I got to set this camera down so I can pull out my photography camera. these people walking going to the slopes 
Are you recording me? <laughs> if you do it now, it'll see. <laughs> this dude was trying to pose. He was like doing this and that. I'm like, hey, it's recording me right now. Uh, so here's the stream. I don't know if this is a stream. I don't know. I don't actually know. But it does. It does flow. It flows very slowly, but it does flow. It's flowing this way, like going this way. So I was going to walk along the stream. But this is a good photo to take, I think. Yeah, you got the mountains, you got the stream, and you got the reflection of the mountain on the stream. That's actually pretty dope. Yeah, let's uh, get a photo of this. Let's hope that I don't drop my camera. This isn't a flat surface. I've been trying to get face tracking to work on this DJI and it's being uncooperative. So, anyway, I brought my camera, both of my cameras actually. I brought uh, my favorite photography camera, which is my Fuji X100V. However, that's not the best camera to have here for maybe obvious reasons. Maybe it's not. So, got my Fuji X100V. I'm not going to be using this today. I will be using this today, which has my little strap. I may have to pull it off because I'm going to hang it on my backpack. Surprisingly, the camera is doing quite well, even though it's precariously perched on this round log. And uh, you may be wondering, like, who would do something so foolish? All material goods can be replaced. That's my fundamental belief. So if you know where to fall, it's like, so what? I'll just buy another one. Let's do a scenic shot. Quite dope view, isn't it? You got the sun out. It's cloudy today, unfortunately. You got slopes, you got slopes over there. And you also got slopes up there, which we'll see later. I forgot to uh, attach my camera before I keep walking. I can't hold both. All right, so I got my little, you know, thing to do it. Cool, cool, cool. I think I'm a professional blogger now, or a photographer. I got my camera attached. No, I can go shoot some pictures. Oh, and I, man, I literally pulled out my camera to take this picture, <laughs> this picture right here, and I didn't do it. So let me do that right quick. Oh, I thought I took off my, uh, my lens cap. I guess I never did. All right, make sure I'm in photo mode, I'm in manual, we'll go ahead and, you know, get this on, even though I don't really need it. At the moment, I am at F5, and I'm going to shoot this at a shutter speed of uh, 1 over 250. Actually, I'm going to F5.6. It looks like I'm a little overexposed, so the only thing I can really do here is uh, use my shutter speed. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. It looks like I have... Um, uh, Exposure compensation on so I'm in auto ISO didn't realize that let me turn this off. I don't want auto ISO Man, you know what? I actually hate this a7 IV uh, All these cameras that have the articulating screen. I'm not a fan of And my reasoning behind not being a fan of these articulating screens is that if you want to be able to you know see your image and Have it lined up. You can't do that. You have to flip the screen out and let's say you want to put the eye, you want to put it up to your, to your eye, the EVF. The EVF won't turn on if you have the screen out, which is quite, is really annoying. I don't understand why Sony doesn't fix these things. Like it's, I really don't understand. It's, it's annoying, but no, whatever. Not much I can do about it right now, other than bitch and complain. See there, you got the nice sun reflecting i'm not going down there i'll slip and fall i went down there last time but it wasn't as icy the last time i was here but the last thing you want to do is get you know get halfway down this hill and then <laughs> you lose all traction and then you know you have a little tumble you probably won't stop until you end up in that water and uh to me that's the worst thing that can happen is end up in cold ass water to be cold and wet is the worst I can tolerate one or the other. I can't do both at the same time. Nope. Look at all this dirty snow. This is what they don't show you on TV. When they show you snow, they always show us like, like white, pure. And while this is white, it's got a lot of dirt and debris in it. Oh, there's a little dog. Oh, okay. Hopefully he's warm in there. It's cold as hell out here. Hands are numb. Nose is running. 
And I'm starting to think that this was a mistake. <laughs> I wanted to do a hike in the woods, but the place that I would want to do that hike at is an hour away. Not that it's an hour in distance, it's an hour in time because of where we are. Hey, little pup, you just barking? You just barking? You want to be on the camera? You want to be on the video? You just looking? You want me to play with you? I can't play with you, bro. He was quiet. He was thinking. He's like, is he going to come up here and, and pet me? If he wants one, he's not going to get it, though. So this is where we were last time. You can't really see it, maybe, because uh, this is such a wide-angle lens on the DJI. But that really big building back there, that's where we had our last uh, coffee event here at the ballroom there. This time, we had it at the ballroom closer to where, where we all stay. It's much nicer, too. So at this point, I am approaching what's possibly private property, maybe. Yeah, that's what I say, private. Don't worry, I'm not going to go on private property on camera. I know there's a trend uh, these days with kids self-snitching, doing illegal shit on camera. You'll never see me doing illegal shit on camera. Not on purpose, anyway. <laughs> I might do something that I didn't know was illegal on camera. But you'll never find me doing something that I know is illegal and then do it. That's just silly. Uh, check it out. So we're at the back of it now. So you can see, you know, it's full floor to ceiling glass. So when you're inside of there, you just get a view of that mountain right there. It's really beautiful. Although, because we did a dinner, uh, we didn't really get much of it. It was like sunset. So we didn't get to see much for long. Ah, yeah, check this out. Look at that. That right there, that's really cool. And that could also be a little dangerous too because you see how it looks like it's all ice, it's all snow. But in reality, it's not all snow. That's actually a stream. It's just frozen in that little section and there's snow cover. So imagine you're walking over that thinking that that's land and you take a step and all you feel is cold water. Oh my gosh, I don't know what I would do, I would die. There was an event to go snowshoeing today. Not really sure what that involves or how cold it would be. But if I do do that, I would, have to, I would legit have to go get those gloves that I was looking at, like mitts. I couldn't get regular gloves. It wouldn't be enough warmth. All right, I think right here is a good place to take a picture. So what I'm gonna do is just dump my little camera here, put it on this, this snow bank right right there you see it's all snow just put it on the snow bank and let's see all right track me track me dji so i'm interested in getting this mountain the problem is that i got these apartments here so i'm trying my best to get this shot without the thing that i don't want to see in it I'm shooting in the same settings and the reason behind that is I want to get that mountain that's really far in the distance. I want that to be sharp and uh, the, you know, if you increase your, your f-stop, you have more things that are sharp in the frame. It increases your depth of field effectively. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go up to f8 and I'm at, um, let's see, I'm going to lower my shutter speed down to 125th of a second uh, my iso is at 125 so i'm at my base iso on this camera and there's a a lift so i'm gonna try to get that lift going to the mountain yeah that's dope i'm a little overexposed at the moment but nothing that a little exposure compensation can't fix i'm going to expose to protect my highlights and there's no actually i can't so i have to use shutter speed i'm i'm at base, base iso i forgot i even said that all right cool i kind of wish that i would have brought my 70 to 200 so i can get more reach the 70 like uh i can't really see it that well i mean i see it but it's tiny 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 i'm gonna have to crop Let's go to manual focus. Make sure I'm actually getting it. There we go. 
I'm taking a lot because you know I'm changing my settings. It's really white out here. And unfortunately, I'm not used to taking photos where everything is white, so it's challenging to expose properly. I was on auto white balance too. I probably should have manually set it, but I'm shooting it raw, so it didn't really matter. I can fix it in post. I'm not going all the way down because I know there's it's just a dead end, so there's no reason to go down there. It's also nothing to see. Looks like I'm I'm going to have to go back to the to my room soon. My battery's about to die, and I wonder how much of that is due to the fact that it's cold as hell out here. Like it is cold, cold. I don't know if you all know this, but these lithium-ion batteries don't perform very well when it's uh, very low temperatures outside so I'm wondering if part of the the battery issue is that because I haven't really been filming for that long I've only had it on for maybe 20 20 or 40 minutes today battery life on this camera camera is about an hour and a half or so which is plenty look at this this is ice check this out all this is ice I have waterproof shoes so I'm good but like that Imagine you take a step and like you just like look at that look at that you take a step and you end up in water Like what if you fall and bust your ass look at this. This is slippery. I have no grip there. No grip whatsoever Yeah, let me get off this ice Last thing I need is to fall and bust my ass on this ice <laughs> Not only will I have a cold ass a little dirty ass this water is dirty. It's nasty. Man, could you imagine having to do a walk of shame with wet, cold ass? That's the worst, wet, cold ass. Uh, nah, no thank you. All right, walking back to the main building now. We'll go uh, charge this. This DJI has quick charging, so I can, I can uh, plug it up for about 20 or 30 minutes and it'll get to 80, 80% or so, which is good enough. I didn't bring the expand like the uh the battery grip i wanted to save weight even though it's light i have a lot of uh well i don't it's not a lot of cameras i only have three cameras with me i have uh the one that you you know you see here i have my fuji the one that i showed off earlier and i have this one and obviously i have my, my iphone if you really want to count that as a camera which you i mean obviously you could beautiful view I love this creek you can see the mountain from the creek oh man I wish I can get lower because remember I don't have my 70 to 200 so I don't have the reach so the only way to get the reach is to go down there which you know it's a little bit too much effort all right I'm re-entering the village that's what they call this area over here the village so uh, uh, let me actually I should show this is the village it's a collection of apartments and hotel rooms. Uh, or you know, All the hotel rooms are like suites except for this place. These are like the old school motel rooms. I did not like it. But who knows, maybe they've renovated it since then. Back at the village. So, I am going to head to my room. And I guess I can record that just so we can see what all this looks like. So if any of you are ever interested coming to Lake Tahoe and you're wondering where you should go, this is a potential place you can come. It's the village at the Palisades Tahoe. Oh, no, no, no. So if you're into skiing and all that kind of stuff, you can, uh, you can stay at the hotel here and you just go skiing. You don't have to drive or walk to the, sl uh, the slope. When you're tired, you just go back to your room you know, shower up, warm up, that kind of thing. They have restaurants here, like this, uh, this uh, Starbucks. There's an acai place. There is chicken place. They have to have chicken for me, like, but it's not real chicken. It's like chicken sandwiches and real chicken and shit. Chicken tenders. Not good old fried chicken. Yeah, see? So you see there's more. You can see the slopes in between 
some of these buildings. That's the fire pit that I was at earlier. That looks to be my, some of my coworkers. Maybe, yeah, that looks like our VP of engineering, chilling. I kind of want a selfie stick for this thing so that I can hold it closer to my body and hold it farther out. By the way, this is the standard lens on the DJI. I do have the 15 millimeter lens in my backpack, which does give a little bit more reach. And maybe I should put that on. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna put that on right quick, just so that we can see what it looks like. And I'll try to get some B-roll shots. Actually, I'm not gonna do big B-roll shots. Then I'll have to edit it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put my camera on the giant chair. No, this is the giant chair. Come on, detect my face. One of the things that I don't like about this DJI camera is that it only detects the face when you switch it over. It doesn't stay on. It's, it's hard to explain, but I don't like it. Uh, take, do that. There's a helicopter going up there. Hopefully no one got injured. There we go. I still hear the helicopter, but I don't see it. So, must have went away. I'm back to my building here. So I'm gonna go to my room right quick, warm up, recharge this camera and switch batteries in this camera. It seems like this battery is only at 57% now. No idea why. I'm in the room, getting ready to head. I don't know why it's looking down. Let's get this straight. Yeah, getting ready to head to the tram. It's cold outside, so I gotta get dressed. I got all this stuff here out on the, uh, on the table, I got shades and all of this. Had to charge up my little uh, phone charger. Had to put another battery in here. I brought two extra batteries for this. And my watch is dead, or it's about to die, so I ended up just taking it off. Needed to charge the phone. Also needed to charge this DJI and the mic that you're hearing me through. And yeah, I'll show you what I'm, what I'm rocking to try to stay warm. I got this hat on, obviously. Uh, but I also have this Patagonia uh, jacket. It's got a hoodie on it. It's really soft. Like, it's really, really, really soft. It's really warm, too. And it's light. So I got that as the inner. And then my outer is this uh, North Face thing. It's a 800, um, I think it's 800 fill. It's relatively warm. It's not as warm as my... my uh, my other jacket that I'm not gonna talk about. But yeah, it does the job for here. And it keeps me warm enough. I don't need to wear any gloves cause I can use the pockets in my, my jacket. Oh, and I got my shoes. Here we go. Here's the shoes. Uh oh, what did I just do? All right, I have, I think I broke my, my gimbal. All right, there we are. So I got the shoes. I don't know if y'all know about, oh, y'all probably don't know nothing about this right here. These Adidas, uh, these are the, uh, the Terex uh, trail runner shoes. I have multiple pair of these. I have a few in black and a few in white. These are by far my favorite shoe. You know, you got the continental rubber. Uh, you got the boost midsole and you got, uh, it's not a high top rather. It's, it's like a mid top. It is, it's relatively high. And you know, you got this little stretchy bit. All of this is waterproof. So yeah, and it's really light. These are my default shoes when I'm not wearing my sandals or my toe shoes, which are actually my defaults when I'm wearing clothes. I'm all packed, ready to go. I'm heading outside right now. I'm gonna head back to the tram and this time we're gonna actually get up on it and go up to the top of the mountain. And I'll try to do as much scenic shots as I can while I'm up there. 
I already know it's going to be incredibly cold and windy, so we'll see how much, how long I can last. Ain't nobody using that hot tub right now. <laughs> it's so cold outside. You may feel good in the hot tub, but as soon as you get out, you got to deal with that cold, plus you're wet. And you just came out of hot water, so you're gonna feel even colder than you would, than you otherwise would. Ah <sighs> oh, man, I forgot to put on lip chat. It's a little dry here in California. There's almost no humidity. And it's also cold and I'm up in altitude. So my lips are a little bit chap. Or maybe I have lipstick, uh, lipstick in my uh, lip balm. Is that what you call it? Lip chap? I may have some in my backpack. We'll see when I get to my final destination. Beautiful day. It's starting, it's starting to turn into a beautiful day. The sun's out. Anytime the sun's out, man, like that's what, I love the sun. Anytime it's out, it's amazing. So I'm gonna walk to the lift. It's about a five, five minute walk or so. It'll be pretty chill. Maybe I'll walk a little slow. I gotta get secondary shots on my iPhone for Instagram. So for those of you who follow me on Instagram, I guess you're gonna see how I do this. It's pretty easy. I just take my phone, <laughs> just do that. You know, just little short clips. Don't need to do long clips. I find that Instagram stories, people prefer a shorter clip to a longer one. Plus they take up less space on my phone. <laughs> I do actually have to worry about that because I shoot so much video content on my phone. Even though I have the 512 megabyte or 500 gigabyte model, these ProRes videos are kind of heavy. And that's not to say that they stay on my phone. They get taken off via iCloud, but something I still gotta be mindful of. All right, enough of looking at me. Let's look at that beautiful mountain. We're gonna make our way up there. And we'll do some recording uh, inside of the tram as well in addition to the interior of the building. So if any of you are interested in coming, you will kind of get a feel for what you need to do, where you need to go, that kind of thing. All right, we got more Instagram. Oh, that's a really cool shot. I'm gonna get a photo of that right quick. All right, so it's a change of plans. Initially, I was gonna go up on this lift, but I think that my, one, of my, one of my friends may be done with their class. So instead of just going up there now, I'm gonna wait, hang back for about 10 or 15 minutes, and we'll come back. So I guess what I could do is we can explore. Oops, it lost me again. The face tracking, it stops working. I, I think it's because I'm wearing this hat and these shades. It seems to work fine when I'm at home, but here it's not working great at all. Well, in any case, uh, I, I want to show you all some of the scenery while it's daytime, while I have good light. This is the best time of day to film for with, with this camera. And I may actually put the ND filter on so that we can see what this looks like with a constant shutter speed. I'm not filming with a constant shutter speed, uh, shutter speed believe it or not. You got all the mountains, and there's that house over there. The locker room with the snow on the top. Then you have where the lifts are. And you can get up to the lifts by going that direction over there. And they lift up over here. And you should see one coming down. So let's go, let's go underneath there and, and just look. See what we can see. It's more crowded today than it was last time. See the ski lifts out in the distance. Actually, this is a good spot for some photos. I'll do some photos while I'm here. Some tables that I could put myself on. All right, 
We're gonna see how the face tracking works when it's looking at the point at the back of my head. All right, I got some quick shots. None of them are that great, but that's okay. My philosophy when it comes to photography is that you're gonna shoot 10,000 shots. There's one that's probably gonna be good. So these days, my philosophy is to shoot the photos and store them. And over time, I may see different things in the frame that I wanna highlight or show. So some of the photos that I've taken and made prints of are photos that I've taken three, four, five, six years ago. Some of them are over a decade ago. And while I'm going through my, my catalog of photos, I will just, some will catch my, my eye. And that's how I know that photo is worth me editing further. Just because it caught my eye. I wonder how this is handling the fact that I'm backlit right now. I don't have my ND filter on. I did say I was gonna put the ND filter on. And I didn't do it. I'll do it on the top, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Anyway, we're about to go back inside this building. I haven't heard back from my buddy, so I'm assuming that he's still up there. You know, it's not like you get reception up there. So, that means that he's probably still up there. Also, if you have on, if you have your skis and your ski sticks and your, your gloves and all that kind of stuff on, you're not trying to be playing with a phone. So they have ticket pickup, or I can go buy a ticket. Except they're all closed, so I had to buy a ticket online. It says pre-purchase tickets. It's saying tickets are available inside, but I'm not seeing it. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna have to purchase the ticket on the app, I didn't wanna do it. I knew that I had to, I just didn't want to. So let's go ahead and get this ticket purchased right quick. Finally got the ticket. So they said that the next one would be here in about 12 minutes. That was about five minutes ago. So it's coming down at the moment. It's right there. I don't know if you can see this right there. I'm over here looking puffy. Swings a little bit every time. 
we get the towers. So it's too smooth. Yeah. You don't feel it because you're sitting. You don't feel it as much. Thank you. 